So this is part four in the series on world-class preventive uh, personal prevention experience. Now, <clears throat> here's the first problem. People pay um, between fifteen hundred up to fifteen thousand for a typical bail donine type of uh, prevention experience. My goal was to make it far more affordable. So one of the things I did when I started this channel and we're going deeply into this with this series was I said, look, I'm going to make a lot of this basic prevention information. It's, you know, prevention is something I've been doing th over 30 years. And again, it's uh, bailed and needs a great approach to cardiovascular prevention. I want to make this for free, uh, at least the information uh, free on YouTube. And in this series, we're actually using the um, the the deck that we used to use with patients uh, that paid routinely five thousand dollars for our version of that type of prevention experience. So <clears throat> we got a lot of good uh, reviews. Um, actually, this is a review from uh, Steve Hubbard just a couple of days ago. Dr. Brewer, great goal, and we really appreciate the videos. Would you please consider an entry level consultation for something like ninety nine dollars? which would be online only and might include recommendation and review of planned tests, then a basic one-time email review of the results. Well, it's a great idea, Steve, and it brings up a couple of other issues as we go down this path. The first is a legal issue. Um, there has to be something called, legally, something called a patient-doctor relationship. Now, you may remember I used to run the medical uh, staff for um, MD Live, the number two telemedicine company uh, in the world. I still do some work with them. Um, all the states, and the states are responsible for these laws, all the states are responsible for developing a law and saying how the doctor and patient can interact and when you can write scripts, when you can give the patient advice. There has to be a personal uh uh, description from the patient of what's going on. Now, originally that all used to be face-to-face. -face. Telemedicine broke a lot of uh, old ideas and thoughts, and then it became available to do that remotely. As you may know, I've done a couple of videos on this, I'm still working now with a couple of other uh, telemedicine companies. One of them is K-Health, which is doing a great job. It's sort of like the deep blue of uh, urgent care, um, helping the doc diagnose using computer, um, uh, deep computer logic. I'm also working with Advalent, a company that is doing something very similar, but in a Medicare Advantage space. The reason I bring that up is now, in, uh, all, in most states of the union, you can develop a doctor-patient relationship using uh, email or even text. Uh, it's going on. There are companies that have been doing that uh, for over a year now. So there's a lot of opportunity. Meanwhile, I'll continue to work with these two companies to uh, meld the prevention experience uh, into that type, of, uh, that type of experience. Before we go into the video, though, just one other thing I want to tell you about in terms of uh, solutions in this area. Have you seen the cardiovascular inflammation course? Uh, it started off as sort of a, uh, an informal, all I could do kind of, uh, you know, just a few videos on the basics. Uh, Kim Hermosa, our media manager, has come in and provided captions. And just today, um, I saw the first draft on the entire text for the uh, inflammation course. Um, that should be ready in about a week. And uh, guess what the price is? It's not fifteen hundred. It's not fifteen thousand. It's thirty bucks. That's the cardiovascular inflammation course. So we're making a lot of progress in getting something that's available for masses. Um, we're already about two thirds of the way through a course now on insulin resistance, um, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome. So there's a lot of work going in this area, and thank you so much for your, responsive, uh, your response to it and your interest. Now let's get back to the video. This one's going to be specifically what, uh, what the patient would hear in a, um, an interaction in DEC regarding the CIMT. I start off with some uh, introduction that's actually for you uh, uh, 
video, YouTube video viewers, you know we've got multiple videos out there that talk about CIMT. This is more about that personal experience. Now, uh, speaking of other videos, if you have other questions about uh, CIMT, I've got, gosh, what, about a half dozen, maybe more videos uh, going into the details of CIMT. Uh, Todd Eldridge, pardon the, the, um, the bad visuals here. I'm plagued with those on a routine basis. But Todd Eldridge is a, um, a PhD epidemiologist. He's focused on quality and inter-rater uh, reliability. Basically, the bottom line is he's uh, one of the best qualified in the world for making sure that you get an excellent CIMT first time, second time, every time you do it. Todd is one of my major suppliers for this activity. Now, we um, to go a little bit further into the... Ca I mentioned CAFE's cave study a few minutes ago, and I mentioned there were a lot of people that we thought did not have risk until we looked and found that they do have uh, plaque. So here's what happens. If you go to those other 299... Uh, carotid ultrasound areas and get a carotid ultrasound, it's going to tell you it's negative unless there's so much plaque that it actually obstructs the flow. However, the literature is, uh, the science is totally clear. If you have any plaque, whether it uh, uh, obstructs the flow or not, you have major risk, as in 40% risk for a heart attack over the next 10 years. Now, what the standard uh, non-preventive folks uh, and standard prevention folks use for assessing risk is things like the Framingham studies, again, other studies, and try to apply those to you based on your risk factors. The reason I mention that is, according to those, just a Framingham risk factor, the, uh, the agreement is, the standard is, if you have a 10% uh, probability of heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years, and some people say 20%, then you have high risk. When you have class 3 um, CIMT, which you won't get from a carotid ultrasound, in other words, if you have any plaque, your probability is 40%. Uh, that gets a little complicated. Let's go look at this uh, image and that'll help us understand. These are people that have no plaque. Uh, people that have um, plaque but it's less than one millimeter. In other words, we would call that no plaque as well. These are people on the fourth column here that have plaque so much that it's obstructing the artery flow. Now, Routine Framingham history risk factors will, will differentiate usually this group from this group. But here's what it'll also do. It'll usually, it will not differentiate this group at all. Some of them at random will go into, into no risk. Others at random will go into high risk. So here's the thing. We've got a test, and that's why CAIM2 is, is so important if you're actually looking for your heart attack and stroke risk. If you have plaque over one millimeter thick, your probability is at least 40% of having a heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years. So again, if you, if you patiently waited uh, for me to get through that, I really appreciate it. It's an important point, and it helps us understand why. Even though it's hard to find a CIMT in this uh, in most cities, it's important. Uh, Brad and Amy love to talk about the cat in the gutter. They're talking about a hot plaque in, uh, in the artery wall. And here they're showing inflammation. If you've got inflammation, that cat's more likely to jump out and get that bird. Now, where did this, where did this cat in the gutter uh, thing come from with, uh, with Brad Bale and Amy Deneen? They were in uh, Italy once, I think, pre presenting some some of their science, and um, as you know, in Italy there are 
uh, plazas, and they were sitting having a having a coffee or tea at a plaza, and they noticed these um, these pigeons, these birds hanging around the plaza. They also noticed a cat who was uh, hanging, lurking around in the drainage air uh, gutters, and that cat would jump out, get a snack on on the uh, one of the pigeons. So Brad's point was, you know what? That's just like a hot plaque in our arterial wall. It's just sitting there waiting, and it's going to get another pigeon if it jumps out of that artery wall and into the artery. Now, a couple of comments about uh, inflammation and the history of inflammation, and then we'll wrap up this, uh, this video in the series. If you've ever seen uh, the movie or the series Charity or Charité. Charité was a hospital built, or it still is, it's a hospital built just north of Berlin. It was built by Kaiser Wilhelm, I think, back in the days around the Black Death. It was built north of the city. Um, the reason for it was, again, they didn't want to be carrying bodies of people that had died due to Black Death through the city itself. That's how far we're talking about. I mean, Middle Ages, Dark Ages kind of time period, 150, well, what, Middle Ages, 157 years ago. Actually, at this point, closer to 160 years ago. Virchow was a, uh, Dr. Virchow was a, um, was the chief of staff, the medical staff there. And that medical staff, by the way, still uh, going strong and has won more Nobel Prizes than any individual hospital medical staff in the world. Dr. Virchow said, you know what? I think atherosclerosis is not so much um, just laying down plaque and fat. I think it's inflammation. And there's the citation if you want to look it up. Um, 160 years later, we're finally beginning to realize he was right. Virchow was right. The um, plaque is caused from inflammation. We'll go back into uh, more details on this in the uh, next video in the series. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for your interest. Thanks, and if you hit that uh, subscribe or like button, it makes a big difference. Um, an even bigger difference happens when you share. You can share on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Pinterest. When you do that, it makes a big difference in terms of the algorithm. It sends... Um, this to other people realizing that humans think this is interesting information and helpful. Um, thank you again.